here is your latest African news. South Africa At least 22 found dead in South African nightclub. South African authorities are investigating the deaths of at least 22 young people in a nightclub. The victims were found strewn across floors and tables at the Enyobeni Tavern in the coastal town of East London. The bodies were taken to mortuaries where post-mortem examinations, including toxicology tests, will seek to establish a cause of death. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa expressed his deepest condolences to the families of the victims. Oscar Mabuyane, Prime Minister of East Cape Province, where the tragedy happened, did not give possible reasons for the deaths but condemned the unlimited consumption of liquor. Those found dead were aged between 18 and 20 and were students celebrating pens down, a party held after writing high school exams. A provincial safety official stated that a stampede had been ruled out as the cause of death as there were no visible wounds. Relatives have not yet been given permission to see the bodies according to local reports and have been calling out the names of the dead loved ones. The cause of the tragedy is not yet known, but there are reports that a poisonous substance, a gas leak, or possibly a stampede at the tavern could be to blame for the deaths. Expressing his condolences to affected families, President Cyril Ramaphosa said he was worried about the circumstances under which young people, potentially under the age of 18 years, were allowed to gather at the tavern. Ramaphosa said in a statement the law must take its course once investigations conclude. Nigeria. British police hold on to Ife head stolen from Nigeria. British police have continued to hold on to a stolen Nigerian artifact as Nigerian officials and a Belgian antique dealer failed to reach an agreement on its return. The Ife head is a bronze cast head from the old Ife kingdom which is believed to be about 700 years old. There are only about 20 of them still in existence. According to reports, a local Belgian antique dealer acquired the artifact on November 14, 2007 at an auction for confiscated art items organized by Belgian authorities. The antique dealer has refused to authorize the transfer of the bronze head back to Nigeria, insisting on being paid but Nigeria insists that she will not pay for what is originally hers. In 2019, a Nigerian delegation met the dealer in a cordial atmosphere. At the time, the dealer had asked for 5 million US dollars but later brought his price down to 3.5 million US dollars. In 2017, the dealer tried to sell the head through Woolley and Wallace who passed it on to the British police. In 2019, the police took the head to the British Museum where curators confirmed its authenticity by comparing it with a cast that was made in the late 1940s. I feel confident it's genuine, said an expert who saw it. Despite confirming its origin, the British police insist they are neutral. The UK has suggested that the Belgian government, having made the error of selling the head in 2007, pays off the dealer. The Belgian government has yet to make any public comments. Like some other missing artifacts, the Ife head was stolen from the Joss Museum on January 14, 1987. These broke in to the museum, severely beat up the guard, and carted away nine of the museum's most precious treasures. Nigeria's National Commission for Museums and Monuments instantly alerted UNESCO, providing photographs of everything stolen from Joss. In 1990, collectors in Switzerland were approached by a man trying to sell a beautiful Benin bronze head for a half a million Swiss francs. The collectors were suspicious, and with the help of the American, Swiss, and Nigerian diplomats, it was identified as having come from Joss and was returned to Nigeria. Africa wide. Casta Semenya brands African athletics leaders cowards over the DSD stands. Two time Olympic and three time world champion Casta Semenya has branded leaders in African athletics cowards for failing to stand up and fight for female athletes who are facing eligibility issues. The 31-year-old is barred from competing in her preferred 800-meter race by World Athletics Differences of Sexual Development DSD rules introduced in 2019. Athletes with high testosterone are required to medically lower their levels in order to compete in events between 400 meters and 1500 meters. 
Several other African athletes have been affected by the DSD rules, including Burundi's Olympic silver medalist Francine Nionsamba and her fellow 800-meter runner Margaret Womboi of Kenya. Last year, two Namibian teenagers, Christine Mboma and Beatrice Masilingi, were forced to step down from the 400 meters weeks before the Tokyo Olympics after they were informed of their elevated testosterone levels. Both Mboma and Masilingi ended up competing in the 200 meters in Japan, with Mboma winning a historic Olympic silver for her country. However, Semenya, who now competes over 5,000 meters, has questioned African leadership's handling of the teenagers' situation as well as its relative silence on the DSD matter in general. CAA Director General Lamine Fati said Semenya has the right to express her sentiments and that concerns over DSD rules were raised by the organization a long time ago and were discussed again recently at a CAA Council meeting in Mauritius. A debate about eligibility in women's sports has been heating up with recent focus being on the status of transgender athletes. Last week, World Athletics President Seb Ko hinted his organization could follow suit in banning transgender women from elite female competitions, insisting fairness is non-negotiable. Rwanda and Barbados Rwanda-Barbados sign new partnership agreement. Rwanda Development Board and Invest Barbados have signed an agreement to promote and implement strategic private sector investments in both countries. The signing took place on the sidelines of the 26th Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. The agreement was signed by Claire Akamanzi, the Chief Executive of Rwanda Development Board, and Kay Ann Greenwich, Chief Executive Officer of Invest Barbados. Invest Barbados is an economic development agency of the Government of Barbados. Among the strategic sectors mentioned in the agreement, agreement include agro-processing for local and export markets, tourism, health, mining, real estate and financial services. Greenwich said that among other things, the MOU seeks to foster connection between the two nations and consequently the respective regions, Africa and the Caribbean. President Paul Kagame visited the Caribbean nation in April whereby he held talks with Barbados Prime Minister Mia Motley and witnessed the signing of an agreement aimed at strengthening cooperation between Rwanda and Barbados. Diaspora. Colombia elects first Afro-Colombian female vice president. As Colombia's voters put aside a long-time anti-party to leftist and chose one as their own new president, they also carved out another milestone, electing the country's first black vice president. When former leftist rebel Gustavo Petro takes office as president on August 7th, a key player in his administration will be Francia Marquez, his running mate in Sunday's runoff election. Marquez is an environmental activist from La Toma, a remote village surrounded by mountains where she first organized campaigns against a hydroelectric project and then challenged wildcat gold miners who were invading collectively owned Afro-Colombian lands. The politician has faced numerous death threats for her environmental work and has emerged as a powerful spokeswoman for black Colombians and other marginalized communities. Marquez grew up in a small home built by her family and had a daughter when she was 16, whom she raised on her own. To support her daughter, Marquez cleaned homes in the nearby city of Cali and also worked at a restaurant while studying for her law degree. She was awarded the 2018 Goldman Environmental Prize for her successful efforts to remove gold miners from the collectively owned Afro-Colombian lands around her village. Marquez entered the presidential race last year as a candidate for the Democratic Poll Party, though she lost out in an inter-party consultation in March to Gustavo Petro but she gained national recognition during the primaries and received 7,000 votes, topping most veteran politicians. In speeches calling for Colombia to confront racism and gender inequalities and to ensure basic rights for the poor, Marquez energized rural voters who have suffered from the country's long-armed conflict as well as young people and women in urban areas. Africa-wide 
AU calls for probe on migrant deaths at Spanish enclave. The African Union has called for an investigation into the deaths of many African refugees at the Spanish border town of Melilla at the weekend. Officially, 27 migrants died, but some reports put the death toll at about 100. AU chief Moussa Faki Mohamed voiced his shock at the violent and degrading treatment of the African migrants trying to cross from Morocco into the Spanish colony. On 25th June, approximately 2,000 refugees approached the heavily fortified border between the Moroccan region of Nador and the Spanish colony of Melilla. In a statement via Twitter on June 26th, Mohamed said, I express my deep shock and concern at the violent and degrading treatment of African migrants attempting to cross an international border from Morocco into Spain. I call for an immediate investigation into the matter and remind all countries of their obligation under international law to treat all migrants with dignity and to prioritize their safety and human rights while refraining from the use of excessive force, he added. His remarks came as the Moroccan Association for Human Rights shared videos on social media that appeared to show dozens of refugees lying hurt on the ground, many of them motionless and bleeding as Moroccan authority forces stood over them kicking and hitting them with their weapons. The rights group said they were left there without help for hours, which increased the number of deaths. The group has called for a comprehensive investigation. In a statement, Amnesty International expressed its deep concern over the events at the border. The International Organization for Migration and UN Refugee agency UNHCR also weighed in with a statement that expressed profound sadness and concern over what happened at the morocco melia border. The mass crossing attempt was the first since Spain and Morocco mended relations after a year-long dispute related to Western Sahara, a former Spanish colony annexed by Morocco in 1976. The thaw in relations came after Spain backed Morocco's plan to grant more autonomy to the territory, a reversal of its previous support for a UN-backed referendum on the status of Western Sahara. Meanwhile, Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez has applauded Spain and Moroccan collaboration on the border, saying the mass migration attempt was well resolved. Sanchez also called the incident an attack on the territorial integrity of our country in a violent manner. Morocco Activists say government used unjustified force against African refugees in Melilla. Morocco has said more than 27 migrants died and 76 injured on its side of the fence on June 25th while trying to cross the Moroccan-Spanish border in Melilla. Moroccan police brutally beat the group at the border, causing a panic that led to a deadly stampede. Melilla is a Spanish colony in North Africa bordering Morocco that refugees used to cross to Europe. Amina Abidar, a spokesperson for the Moroccan Association of Human Rights, AMDH, said the migrants had been mistreated by Moroccan security forces during the border rush. He described how migrants had been left trapped on the ground for hours without medical assistance. AMDH shared videos on social media that purportedly showed dozens of migrants, some bleeding and lying motionless on the ground, with Moroccan security forces standing over them while others kicked the injured. The rights group said the lack of action by security forces likely led to many more deaths. Abidar also stated that the final death toll was likely to be much higher and called on Moroccan authorities to hold an urgent and fair investigation into the incident. Five other rights groups in Morocco and Spain backed up the call for a probe. The Spanish Commission for Refugees, CEAR, described what it said was the indiscriminate use of violence to manage migration and control borders. It said that the violence had stopped eligible asylum seekers from reaching Spanish soil. Diaspora African fashion and food celebrated at the African Pop-Up Festival in Brooklyn. Africans in New York got a taste of home during the first official weekend of summer with a festival that highlighted the continent's culture. African fashion, food and music was celebrated at the 4th Annual African Pop-Up Festival in Brooklyn, New York. The event, a precursor to the African Restaurant Week, usually held in October in New York, saw over a dozen vendors from different parts of New York and neighboring state New Jersey in attendance. Fashion was the main attraction of the event. 
Besides clothing and its accessories, including jewelry, there was also skincare products available. With nearly all COVID-19 restrictions lifted across the United States, organizers of the African Pop-Up Festival have a packed itinerary for the second half of the year, starting with the African Restaurant Week in New Jersey in July. With the summer season now in full swing across the United States, organizers of the African Pop-Up Festival say they're looking to expand the festival to other states, including Atlanta in the South, in hopes of spreading the African culture and giving a further boost to African businesses. Africa-wide Germany to return artifacts taken from Africa during colonial rule Priceless artifacts removed and looted from African nations during Germany's colonial period will be permanently returned, German officials have said. The Berlin-based Prussian Cultural Heritage Foundation, which manages the German capital's many museums, said it had entered into negotiations on the returns of artifacts to Namibia, Tanzania and Cameroon. Among the artifacts to be returned is a shell-studded statue of the mother goddess Ngonso, which holds great spiritual significance to the Nso people of Northwest Cameroon. The statue has been part of the collection of Berlin's Ethnological Museum since 1903 after it was donated by a German colonial officer who had stolen it from the Nso. The board also approved the permanent return of 23 artifacts, including jewelry, tools and fashion items to Namibia. The objects also stolen during the colonial period from 1884 to 1919 were sent to Namibia last month for research purposes and will now remain there. The foundation said its president had also been authorized to sign an agreement on the return of objects Germany looted from Tanzania during the Majimaji Rebellion and other conflicts during its early 20th century colonial rule. Ethiopia Addis names team for Nairobi peace talks with Tigray leaders. Ethiopian authorities have named a team of seven negotiators for possible peace talks with Tigray forces. The announcement comes after Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed announced earlier in June the formation of a committee to handle negotiations with Tigray's ruling party, which the government declared a terrorist group last year. The talks will be led by Deputy Prime Minister Demeke Mekonin. Tigray's leaders have not yet commented on the latest announcement by the federal authorities of the East African nation. But the region's top official, Debrechen Gebre Michel, said in an open letter to the international community on June 15 that his side is open to peace talks. He also warned that his group's readiness to go the extra mile for peace must not be misunderstood as a readiness to abandon our principles from weakness or greed. The African Union Special Envoy, former Nigerian President Olusegun Obasanjo, has been traveling within Ethiopia in recent weeks as he tries to get both sides to talk. It remains unclear where the peace talks would happen. Tigray officials have said they are prepared to meet in Nairobi, the Kenyan capital, in negotiations hosted and facilitated by the Kenyan president. Sudan West Darfur tribal leaders sign accord to end hostilities. West Darfur has witnessed the signing of agreements to stop hostilities between Arab and Masalit tribes in El Ganina locality and the Rezigat and Iringa tribes in Sirba locality in the presence of General Mohamed Hamdan Dagalo Hemeti, Deputy Chairman of the Sovereignty Council and Commander-in-Chief of the Rapid Support Forces. The document on cessation of hostilities and peaceful coexistence between Masalit and Arab tribes, consisting of 13 points, stipulated the formation of a joint mechanism between the two sides, headed in turns by leaders of both tribes and a commitment not to protect criminals within the tribes and to report them, as well as a commitment to build confidence. The document called on the government to extend the rule of law. Hemeti said during his address to the signing ceremony in El Ganina that the government issued a decision not to allow native administration leaders, tribal leaders, to leave their places without the prior permission of the authorities. 
He said that the coming days will witness the arrival of joint forces in the state to secure the agricultural seasons, villages and the camps for the displaced. Hemeti described what is happening in Dafu as deliberate sabotage not far from what is happening in Khartoum. In his address to the signing ceremony of the agreement to stop hostilities between Rezegat and Iringa in Sirba in West Dafu, he accused unidentified parties of aiming to undermine peace, bring Dafu back to the square of war and dismantle its social fabric. Massa Abdel Rahman Assel, the signatory on behalf of the Rezegat tribe, stated that both sides had settled their differences in good faith and that it was all possible due to the RSF's efforts. Africa wide. New Zimbabwean President in Pan-African Parliament The Pan-African Parliament, PAP, the African Union's Consulative Assembly, has elected a new Speaker. Zimbabwean Member of Parliament, MP Fortune Cherumbira, has won a one-horse race to become the President of the Pan-African Parliament, succeeding Cameroon's Roja Nkododang, delegates have said. The assembly has been meeting since June 25th at its headquarters in Midrand, an industrial town halfway between Johannesburg and Pretoria. Charumbira was expected to win ahead of two other candidates from South Sudan and Malawi. The Zimbabwean is the first delegate from Southern Africa to be elected as its head after several presidents from West and East Africa. Created in 2004, the PAP is composed of more than 200 MPs representing some 50 AU members appointed by their respective parliaments. Mali UN maintains peacekeepers in Mali as Russia and China abstain. The UN Security Council voted on June 27 to maintain the UN peacekeeping mission in Mali while Russia and China abstained on the French drafted resolution that extends the mandate of the mission until June 30, 2023 with its current ceiling of 13,289 military personnel and 1,920 international police. Mali has been in turmoil since a 2012 uprising prompted mutinous soldiers to overthrow the president. The power vacuum that resulted ultimately led to an Islamic insurgency and a French-led war that ousted the jihadists from power in 2013. Mali's current ruling military government, which seized power in August 2020, has grown closer to Russia as Moscow has looked to build alliances and gain sway in Africa. Amid tensions with Mali's military rulers, France announced in February that its military forces would be out of the country by the end of July 2022. But France proposed continuing to provide aerial support to the UN peacekeepers who need the capabilities of attack helicopters. Mali strongly objected to a continued French air presence, however, and the French offer was dropped from the resolution. The resolution authorizes the UN mission to assist Malian authorities in promoting and protecting human rights. It also authorizes UN peacekeepers to carry out other priority tasks, including supporting implementation of a June 2015 peace agreement and the current political transition, supporting the restoration of state authority to central Mali, and stabilizing the region, protecting civilians, and creating safe environments for delivery of humanitarian aid. On June 13, Mali's junta leaders signed a new law paving the way for elections and a return to constitutional rule in 2024. The law would allow Colonel Asimi Goita, who is president of the transitional government, and other military members to be candidates. Libya 20 people found dead in desert near border with Chad. 20 people have been found dead in the Libyan desert following a vehicle breakdown near the border with Chad and were presumed to have died of thirst, rescuers have said. The vehicle had come from neighboring Chad and reached some 120 kilometers 75 miles into Libyan territory before breaking down. The service published a video on Facebook showing decomposing bodies in the desert sand near a pickup truck. The sparsely populated region regularly sees summer temperatures above 40 degrees Celsius, 104 Fahrenheit. Libya was plunged into lawlessness following the 2011 uprising that toppled and killed then-President Muammar Gaddafi and its southern borders with Chad, Niger and Sudan have become notorious for people trafficking and smuggling. 
thousands of people cross them every year in attempts to reach the Mediterranean coast and ultimately Europe, but many die en route, including in the harsh Sahara Desert. Kenya Kenya weighs in on Melilla brutality against African migrants. Kenya has said the incident last week in Melilla at the border of Morocco and Spain, where dozens of African migrants attempting to cross into Europe were crushed to death, signals further the inequality in the treatment of refugees from the continent. At the UN Security Council, Kenya said the incident is the latest reminder that African refugees are still treated differently in Europe, despite countries signing global refugee laws. On June 23rd, hundreds of migrants from Africa attempted to scale the border fence between Morocco and Melilla, the Spanish enclave in mainland Africa. Reports show that the emerging chaos after Moroccan guards fired tear gas at them led to a stampede and crash, killing at least 24 migrants. Rights groups in the area reported seeing 37 bodies with several dozens of migrants injured. The African Union Commission Chairperson Musa Faki Mohamed condemned the incident and said the AU demanded an adequate investigation into the incident, which he labeled as degrading to African migrants. The incident has stained both Morocco's credentials as an African country, as it's their border guards who fired on the migrants, and Spain's record of treating migrants. The erected fence is six meters high and is meant to keep away illegal immigrants. In 2014, several migrants were killed after Spanish border guards fired tear gas on their boat. The flow of migrants from Africa has been a subject of international debate recently. Two years ago, the UN Human Rights Council passed a resolution on the fundamental freedoms of Africans and people of African descent against brutality by law enforcement officers. Kenya said Moroccan guards violated that resolution. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, follow, share and like our video. It's the best way of supporting us. And remember, Africa is watching.